The Terracotta Army was far more than just a way for Qin Shi Huang to be protected in the afterlife. It was a massive statement piece, a symbol of his absolute power meant to echo through the centuries. After all, this wasn't just about a secure burial. This was about ensuring China would never forget the man who had unified it under his iron rule. Ancient Chinese beliefs saw the afterlife as a direct reflection of one's earthly life. By surrounding himself with his all-conquering army, Qin Shi Huang sought to retain his might, his status, and his dominance beyond his mortal years. But earthly power alone wasn't enough. To truly rule as an emperor, you needed divine backing, the mandate of heaven that signaled the gods approved of your rule. The sheer size and detail of the terracotta army were meant to leave no doubt that Qin Shi Huang held this divine approval, and that his right to rule extended even into the realm of the dead. Imagine the awe new recruits must have felt if they truly believed their likenesses would continue serving their emperor for eternity. The sheer scale of the terracotta army is truly staggering. The soldiers are life-sized and some high-ranking officers are even taller, emphasizing their leadership and might. Horses, life-sized as well, add to the realism. You're not just seeing an army, you're seeing it arranged in meticulous battle formations within massive pits so vast they could easily house several football fields. The chariots that accompany them are intricate works of art in their own right, some even including ornate canopies, as if ready to carry a high-ranking officer into battle. The logistics of creating this masterpiece within a few short decades must have been extraordinary. They likely used a method of modular design, similar to creating terracotta roof tiles, to build the figures in an assembly line fashion, but to fire these massive figures in kilns large enough and achieve the right temperatures must have been a technical and engineering marvel at the time. Each soldier was given unique features, facial expressions, wrinkles, different hairstyles, and their armor intricately carved to mimic leather or metal. This speaks to an incredible commitment to detail and massive artistic undertaking. To achieve this would have required not only vast numbers of laborers, but an organized hierarchy of craftsmen and project managers to pull off a feat of this magnitude. The Terracotta Army isn't just about showcasing Qin Shi Huang's might or reinforcing his divine right to rule. Look closer, and you realize it's a remarkably personalized project. Despite the massive scale, there seems to have been a desire to represent the real faces of the soldiers who served and conquered under his command. This wasn't about mindless copies, it was about capturing the spirit of his army. Studies show immense diversity in the faces, evidence of the vast swathe of territory Qin Shi Huang had unified. Imagine standing face to face with a young recruit, his eyes gleaming with a mix of determination and perhaps just a hint of fear. Or maybe you find yourself looking at a grizzled veteran with laugh lines and a weathered brow that speaks of countless campaigns. You see moustaches, beards, and every expression from hardened resolve to a flicker of worry. It's a testament to the sculptors and the might of the newly unified China itself. The variety doesn't end there. Hairstyles change, with some figures sporting neat top knots and others elaborate braids that may have signaled rank or division within the army. Even the seemingly minor details are individualized. Subtle variations in the shape of ears and eyebrows make these sculptures feel incredibly lifelike. Clothing tells a story too. Yes, there's armor, but officers boast more elaborate plating and designs. The textures of simpler tunics hint at the different fabrics worn depending on a soldier's role within the army. It's not just about the faces, it's about capturing the essence of a warrior. Artists sculpted hints of muscle definition beneath tunics, perhaps reflecting seasoned veterans or soldiers with more physically demanding battlefield roles. Wrinkles and battle scars speak to both hardships endured and simple aging, making these soldiers silent yet incredibly expressive portraits. Eyes hold a special power. From a focused gaze to a furrowed brow, they speak without words. Sadly, we see the terracotta army in its faded state, but traces of paint tell another story. Dazzling reds, greens, blues and more once covered their surface. The vibrancy is lost to us, but the purpose might not be. These colors were likely significant used to visually distinguish between military units or make some troops stand out on a chaotic battlefield. But just as with faces, color was another layer of individuality and realism lost to the passage of time. The terracotta army, though awe-inspiring, almost makes you wonder if this is the welcome party, just what awaits within the emperor's main tomb. 
The mound marking its location is unassuming, yet it might hold wonders that dwarf even the terracotta soldiers. Historical texts hint at an underground palace of extraordinary ambition and potentially lethal design. Sima Qian, a historian writing just a century after Qin Shi Huang's death, left tantalizing yet chilling accounts. He paints a picture of a subterranean microcosm, rivers of flowing mercury replicating China's waterways, a starry night sky recreated on the ceiling with precious jewels, and hidden chambers rumored to be overflowing with treasures. Think about the kind of dedication and resources needed to create a lavish afterlife replica of an entire empire. Modern science chillingly backs up parts of this fantastical description. Surveys around the tomb mound reveal unnaturally high mercury levels in the soil. Are those the remnants of Sima Qian's mercury rivers? Scans of the area suggest a massive structure lies hidden underground, but the Chinese government wisely takes a cautious approach. Excavating such a complex site could be fraught with danger. The threat of booby traps, the toxic threat of mercury exposure and the fragile state of artifacts untouched for millennia would demand extraordinary care. The Terracotta Army wasn't the only preparation Qin Shi Huang made for his afterlife protection. Alongside the pits, archaeologists unearthed a staggering number of real weapons. Swords in excellent condition with sharp blades, crossbows with working mechanisms. These weren't just for show. They could arm the silent terracotta force should something in the afterlife necessitate their intervention. This raises an unsettling question. What if it's all a magnificent deception? Qin Shi Huang was a master strategist. What if the terracotta army was merely a distraction? his true resting place hidden elsewhere. If so, it's incredibly effective. No one has yet found a burial site containing the remains of the vast army that would have served under such a powerful emperor. Sima Qian doesn't skimp on the warnings when describing the tomb. Hidden crossbows rigged to fire on intruders, the constant threat of toxic mercury. It all paints a gruesome picture designed to ward off potential tomb raiders. Even today, local legends swirl around the tomb, filled with talk of supernatural curses and misfortunes befalling those who disturb its sanctity. Were these simply stories arising from fear or deliberate deterrence planted centuries ago? And then there's a technological surprise. Those weapons found alongside the Terracotta Army have a chrome oxide coating that prevented rust. This was a preservation technique not thought to have been developed in the Western world for centuries later. Did Qin Dynasty artisans discover this method on their own, or potentially stumble upon it while experimenting with other processes? The Terracotta Army isn't just an awe-inspiring sight. It's a testament to the extraordinary circumstances that allowed it to survive for over two millennia. Think about it. Clay figures buried underground, some damaged by collapsing pits and centuries of water intrusion, yet still intact enough for us to marvel at today. Part of it comes down to being forgotten, as time passed, the pits were buried, shielding the figures from the immediate threat of vandalism or the destructive effects of changing landscapes. Terracotta itself is a surprisingly durable material. When fired at the right temperatures, it becomes incredibly hard and resilient. Just think of how terracotta roof tiles last for centuries. Add in the more stable environment found underground, protected from the harsh extremes of weather experienced above, and you have a recipe for survival. Yet it wasn't just ideal conditions, there's an element of sheer luck at play. If farmers hadn't been digging a well in that specific spot in 1974, who knows how much longer the Terracotta Army would have remained hidden. The discovery, while accidental, paved the way for modern archaeologists to step in. They bring tools and techniques of excavation and preservation that simply didn't exist in Qin Shi Huang's time. The Terracotta Army isn't just a collection of statues. It's a window into an empire at the pinnacle of its power. The sheer scale of the complex, the meticulously organized formations, the detailing given even to simple foot soldiers, it all gives incredible insight into the military machine that allowed Qin Shi Huang to unify warring states under his rule. Think about the different troop types, archers, infantry, cavalry, and imagine how they would have functioned as a unified fighting force on a real battlefield. The undertaking itself speaks volumes about the Qin Dynasty's infrastructure. Imagine coordinating the massive number of laborers and managing resources on such an enormous scale. It's a testament to the highly centralized and efficient bureaucracy the Qin Dynasty was known for. The figures themselves stand as a display of craftsmanship. 
Imagine the potters shaping thousands of bodies, the sculptors bringing individual faces to life, and the painters adding those dazzling splashes of color. It reflects not only artistic skill but refinement in mass production techniques that were likely cutting edge for the time. The terracotta army reflects more than power and craftsmanship. It mirrors Qin Shi Huang's worldview. It wasn't enough to rule in life. His ambition extended into the afterlife. He wanted to maintain complete control even after death and those thousands of clay soldiers were the key to his vision. The story doesn't end with the excavation. The terracotta army remains an active archaeological site filled with unanswered questions. There are still pits waiting to be uncovered, and who knows what lies within the Emperor's tomb itself. Scientists are constantly developing new preservation techniques, striving to keep those fleeting traces of paint for future analysis, and even digitally recreate the army's original vibrant appearance. As with any great archaeological discovery, research never stops. Each new analysis peels back another layer, helping us better understand the Qin dynasty, its technology, and the mindset of the visionary and sometimes terrifyingly ruthless emperor who built it. The Terracotta Army deservedly earns its place as a wonder of the world. It's a fusion of power, history, artistry and ambition that continues to fascinate, prompting us to linger on the questions that still swirl around this extraordinary underground army.